2-7, absolute value functions and graphs. All right, in this section, we're gonna talk about absolute value functions and graphs, what they look like. So our objective is, of course, to graph absolute value functions. Um, our essential understanding, what you should know by the end of this section is that just as the absolute value of x is its distance from zero, the absolute value of f of x, or this function right here, the absolute value of f of x, gives us the distance from the line y equals zero for each value of f of x. So that means that our graphs are going to be distance from a line of y equal to zero. So if we're thinking about that, that would be how far away are we from the x-axis, from y is equal to zero, okay? Which is going to give absolute value functions and graphs a very unique look. In order to see what it's going to look like, let's think about this problem right here. Okay? You're jogging. You're running. Going out for a nice run. Okay? Your jogging route takes you across the county line, the border between, in this case, Jefferson County and the next county over. Uh, suppose you graph your distance from the county line with respect to time. What would the graph look like? So let's think about that. So let's make a graph. All right? Distance and time, okay? So as we run this way, as time gets larger, right? We don't go ever go back in time, okay? We're gonna start out our run and we're gonna be some distance away from the county line, okay? As we are running, see, we're running towards the county line. So as we're running, my distance between the county line and, or my distance between me and the county line starts getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Assuming, of course, I'm running at a constant speed. Eventually, I'm going to get to the county line. Then what happens? I don't stop. I just keep going. And now my distance gets further and further away as I keep running. Okay? And notice what my sh the shape of my graph. It looks like a V. Right? All of our absolute value functions are going to look like a V. They are going to be a line that is at some point reversed and goes a different direction. Okay, we'll talk about the slopes of these two different lines near the end of this section. Okay, but all of our absolute value functions are going to look like a V. Okay, some vocabulary. The simplest value, of, the simplest form of an absolute value function is that form right there. That f of x is equal to the absolute value of x. And this is my parent function. The graph of an absolute value linear function in two variables is V-shaped. Okay, we just said that. Okay, every single one is going to look like a V. It's also symmetric about a vertical line, which is called the axis of symmetry. Okay, this is helpful because it can help us graph an absolute value equation. Uh, this graph also has either a single maximum, right, a point at the top, or a single minimum point called the vertex, all right? In my little warm-up problem here, this point right here was the vertex because that is the point that this graph changes direction and it also happens to be a minimum point. This graph never goes below zero, which makes sense because what, what I was trying to graph here is that the, I was trying to graph the distance from the county line. So it makes sense that my distance would never go below zero. So, Here's the basics of an, my absolute value parent function. Okay? My absolute value parent function of f of x is equal to absolute value of x. Okay? If I wanted to make a table, which is always going to be my simplest way to graph this function, if I want to make a table, I plug different values of x, positive values and negative values, into my parent function, okay? and I get my answers, which I could then plot on the graph. Okay? If I think about it in terms of a function, okay, as we remember when we were solving absolute value equations, this equation right here, the absolute value of x has two answers. It equals x if x is positive and negative x when x is negative. Because if I were to plug in negative x inside this function, it would turn positive again. Okay? So I can have two values for each for the answer for absolute value of x. Looking at my graph, okay, my graph, I can see my vertex right down there, 
and I can see, put it in red, and I can see my axis of symmetry. Okay, my axis of symmetry is a line that this graph is symmetrical about. Okay, and these are all the characteristics of a parent function. So let's graph a basic absolute value function. Okay, so here's my function right here. Let's graph that one right there. Okay, what's the graph of the absolute value function? Y is equal to the absolute value of X minus four. And how is it different from the parent function? Okay. Well, let's start with making a table. Okay. Now, I want to know both sides of the absolute value function, so I should pick positive numbers and negative numbers. Let's go with negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Okay. Plugging this into my function, which is f of x is equal to the absolute value of x minus 4. Okay. If I take negative 3 and I plug it in right there into this function, okay, that would turn into a positive 3 minus 4 would be a negative 1. Do it again. Plug 2 into this function. Plug it in for x. Negative 2, absolute value of negative 2 minus 4 gives me negative 2. 1 would give me negative 3. Plugging a 0 in there would give me negative 4. And then plugging a 1 in there would give me negative 3 again. Negative 2 again. Negative 1 again. Okay. So now, if I were to graph this function, let's graph it in blue, I would start with my first point. Negative 3, negative 1. Negative 2, negative 2. Negative 1, negative 3. Negative 4, 0. And so on. And we can see that my shape is going to be kind of like a V. In fact, it is a V. Okay. And then the question we're here is how is this different than my parent function? Well, if I were to graph my parent function, uh, as I look here, I can see that this get has point one, one, two, two, three, three, negative one, one, negative two, two. So if I graph this one, right, I would start here and look. If we compare these two functions, if I take the green one and move it down four, I would get my new function. Okay, so this my blue function is the parent function moved down four. Okay. And if we remember back to 2-6, we can apply all those transformations to an absolute value function. So to review, here are all my transformations of the absolute value functions, the whole, the whole family of functions. Okay. My vertical translation says that if I add k, to the outside of this function, to the output of this function, I move it up. If I subtract k from the outside of this function, from the output of this function, I move it down. If I subtract, subtract h from the input to this function, I move it right. If I add h to the input of this function, I move it left. Okay. Remember that the horizontal translations act a little bit differently. Right? It's kind of the opposite way that you think it should go. Okay, if I multiply an absolute value function by A, I get a stretch if A is bigger than 1, and I get a compression if A is between 0 and 1. And if I have some sort of negative sign, if it is inside the absolute value, or sorry, if it is outside the absolute value, it is a reflection in the x-axis. If it is inside the absolute value, it is a reflection in the y-axis. So... Vertical translations, horizontal translations, stretches, compressions, and two types of reflections. Okay? All of the same stuff that we studied in 2.6 applies to absolute value functions as well. So let's take a look at this, and let's figure out where this function is, has gone based on just this information right here. Okay? Well, what do I see? I see this plus 2 and this plus 3. Okay? The plus 2 inside the function moves the vertex okay moves my vertex or moves the parent function to the left two okay this plus three oops this plus three right here moves the parent function up three so we have to think about where the parent function starts zero zero and i want to move it left two up three left two but that's down three 
Okay. That's not left. That's not left. Left two, up three. Okay. Same thing with this one. Okay. We'll get to what this does in a minute. All right. Um, but just looking at this function right here, we can tell that it's moved left one, down three. Left one, down three. I can see that that is my answer. A is my answer for this question. Okay. Let's talk about what this number does right here. Okay. The right branch of my parent function has a slope of one. Okay. The graph of a times my parent function, if a is being bigger than zero, is a stretch or a compression. Okay. It's a stretch if it's bigger than zero. If it's, it's a compression, if it is less than, if it's a fraction. Okay. So the right branch is always going to have a slope of whatever is in here. Okay. The graph of this is a reflection. So the right branch is going to have a slope of negative a. So what does that mean? That means that my right-hand side, the right-hand branch of every absolute value function, I can tell what the slope is by the number in front if it is in standard form, and we'll talk about standard form in a second. Okay. So this function right here, okay, if I look at it, I can tell that this would be a vertical compression because this fraction right there is, or that number right there is a fraction. It is not bigger than one. So I know it's going to be comp a compression, and I know that the slope of the right-hand branch is going to be one-half. So I know that x is the same. Um, there, it has not been shifted right, left, up, or down. So I'm going to start at 0, 0. Okay, let's do it in red. All right. Now, a slope of one-half means up 1 over 2, and that's going to be my right-hand branch. Up one over two, up one over two. So here's my right hand branch. Now for the left hand branch, okay, if I go back, right, its left hand branch has a slope of negative a. Okay, so the slope has, it has the opposite slope. Okay? So that means the slope of my left hand branch would be y is equal to negative one half x. So my slope would be negative one half. Now, I shouldn't go down here and make my branch like that, I shouldn't go down one right to, while that is a negative slope, now if I draw this line right here, I'm not gonna have an absolute value function. That's not even a function at all. Okay, so I want what I wanna do is I want to go make myself a nice V, either opening up or down, okay? So if I went down one right to, I wouldn't have a V at all, or I wouldn't have a reflected V. But I know I don't have a reflection because this number is positive. So I want to go up one, left two, up one, left two, to give myself a negative slope on the left-hand side and still have this absolute value function open upwards. Okay. Let's try one. Let's try one more that's a little, little more complicated. Okay. I didn't write one down, but we can make one up. All right. So let's make up a nice function, which y is equal to negative two absolute value x minus 3 plus 1. Okay? So, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to graph the vertex point. Okay? I know that my parent function has been shifted 3 to the right, 1 up. 3 to the right, 1 up. Let's do it in red again. 3 to the right, 1 up. Okay? This tells me the slope of my right-hand branch, but it's negative. So that means my right-hand branch is going to have a negative slope, which means it is going to be going down, which means my whole function is going to be opening down, which is fine. So it's going to still be a V, but it's going to be a V that's point that's opening towards the bottom of the graph. Okay. So let's start at my vertex and let's do a point that is down to right one, down to right one. There's my right-hand branch. Now, my left-hand branch would have the opposite slope of 2. It would have a, or sorry, of negative 2. It would have a slope of 2. Again, 
don't go up one right two up one right two because then that would give me something that is not a v it would give me something not a function okay so what i want to do is whoops is i want to go down one down to right one down to right one to give me a slope of positive two and notice that this function is compressed or sorry is stretched it is made thinner by multiplying by a2 and my function up here when i had the graph up there is made flatter by having a one half it's a compression okay so combining all these stretches and compressions gives us the general form of a absolute value function the general form is right there y is equal to a times x minus h plus k the stretcher compression factor is the absolute value a whatever number is out front is the stretcher compression a negative sign out front is a reflection and my vertex is going to be located at h comma k positive h comma k even though it is a negative inside the function my vertex is positive h because the negative sign just tells me Right, and think about it. My negative sign tells me the function moved to the right, which is positive. Okay? And the axis of symmetry is x is equal to h. The x coordinate of the vertex is my axis of symmetry. Okay? So let's identify a basic transformation. So here's my function right here. What are the vertex? What is the vertex and the axis of symmetry of that graph? And how is it? And how is it related to the parent's function? Okay. So think about my general form. Okay, so just comparing my question with the general form tells me that a is going to be equal to 3. h is going to be equal to 2. k is going to be equal to 4. So in that case, my vertex, my vertex is going to be equal to 2 comma 4. My axis of symmetry of my axis of symmetry is x is equal to 2. All right, sorry about that. Quick interruption. Um, where was I? So a is equal to 3, h is equal to 2, k is equal to 4, my vertex is 2, 4, my axis of symmetry is x is equal to 2. How is this transformed from the parent function? Well, this tells me that it has been moved to the right 2, this tells me that it has been moved up 4, and a tells me, right there, a tells me that this has a stretch of a factor of 3. If this was a fraction, if A was a fraction, it would be a compression of whatever factor was there. Okay. So just looking at these functions, you should be able to tell how it has been transformed from the absolute value parent function. Okay. So last is we can look at a graph and use all the things that we know to make myself a to make myself uh, an equation, all right? So what is the equation of the absolute value in this graph right here? Well, the first thing I need to know is the vertex. There it is. Where is that vertex? Well, the vertex is negative one, four. Okay, so using the vertex, I can get most of my equation, but we also have to identify what's A. In order to figure out A, my stretch or compression factor, I need to look at the slope of the right-hand leg. Okay. Doing that tells me down one, one, two, three, over three, down one over three gives me a slope of negative one third. Okay. So now that I have the vertex and A, my stretch or compression factor, I can now write my equation. So I can say, Remember the parent, or remember my standard form, that x minus h plus k 
That's standard form of an absolute value equation. So my equation of this particular line or this particular absolute value equation is going to be y is equal to negative one third x minus negative one. So that turns into plus one plus four, which tells me that should be a dot there. Okay, that tells me that this function is compressed by a factor of one third, which it is. It's that tells me it's compressed by a factor of one third. This tells me that it is reflected over the x-axis, which it is. It's opening down. This tells me the function has shifted one to the left, which it has. This tells me the apparent function has been shifted up four, which it has. Okay. So in all these cases, just looking at the graph can tell you uh, the you can figure out the equation of an absolute value function. Okay. So looking at this one. Which equation has the graph, this graph? Well, I can see that it hasn't moved, been moved up, down, left, or right, but the right-hand leg has a negative slope, okay? In fact, A is going to be equal to down to right 1, down to right 1, which is a slope of negative 2, okay? And then there's no more other transformations, so all I have to do is look and see which one of these has a slope of negative two okay. and that is two dash seven absolute value functions and graphs